Okay, in today's video lecture, we're going to talk about a skin condition called uh, Staphylococcal uh, Scalded Skin Syndrome. And so the name kind of says everything. Uh, it's going to be caused by Staphylococcal virus. Uh, it, the skin will be scalded, uh, and it's a syndrome, so it's associated with some other symptoms as well. Uh, so as we know, it is a staph uh, infection. Um, let's, start, let's just jump straight to pathogenesis here. Second, so pathogenesis. So... Uh, what does staph do? Um, the sta uh, staph uh, bacteria will release uh, toxin. So there's two toxins, uh, exfo uh, exfoliatin A and exfoliatin tin. So this is A, sorry, B. Um, a will cause a more localized type of infection uh, called uh, bullus uh, impetigo. And B is what causes the scalded, uh, staphylococcal uh, scalded skin syndrome. So, um, what does this in the, what does this toxin do? Well, this toxin attacks the uh, epidermal layer of the skin. And so, uh, specifically, so here we have a, a picture of the skin layers. Uh, it specifically attacks the the desmogline one, which is between the stratum spinosum and the stratum granulosum so this area right here gets attacked by the, uh, the specifically the protein desmoglein 1 so this uh, enzyme uh, th this toxin attacks desmoglein 1 which is the protein responsible for maintaining the integrity between the uh, stratum spinosum and the stratum granulosum and so once this uh, toxin attacks you lose this, and so this area of the skin will uh, all come off, and uh, that's what you uh, tend to see. So, uh, clinically, what do you see? So, let's first talk about um, clinically. Uh, what do you see in uh, bullus sympatago? Well, you tend to get these blisters, and these blisters are very interesting because they're uh, they're kind of like a honey uh, honey colored. I'll show you a picture here. So what you'll notice is that the blisters are honey colored, uh, honey colored blisters on top of an erythematous base. Erythematous base. And so when you see here, this you have this nice yellow color, and you can see this erythema erith erith all around this area. So that's a very characteristic lesion. And, and when you see this lesion, it's very, very uh, pathognomonic. It, it's going to be uh, impetigo. However, this lesion can also be caused by strep pyogenes as well. So you have to kind of try to differentiate those two. Uh, where is it primarily found? It's primarily going to be found in the uh, exposed areas and uh, orifices, so around the mouth and around uh, the hands and, and feet in those areas. Um, now these blisters can rupture and when they rupture they leave a uh, kind of a uh, red base uh, behind and they can even, uh, before they rupture, they can actually become very cloudy. Uh, they can become a cloudy vesicle or a cloudy bole and then actually rupture and then they can rupture, leaving this redness uh, behind. How do you diagnose it generally? Just Looking at the lesion is very characteristic, but you can aspirate the fluid. So for, uh, if you really want to confirm your diagnosis, you can aspirate, and then you will find the characteristic Staph aureus uh, bacteria, and that interacted with gram stain. Um, now, with uh, let's move our attention to the more serious uh, st Staphylococcal scalded skin syndrome. Uh, in this situation, um, the the lesion is much more uh, profuse throughout the whole body uh, you know the, the primarily you're going to get it in the uh, perioral area and the flexures and in the flexures it's much much uh, darker as well so you can't really see that well in this picture but you'll see in, in other pictures uh, the flexural areas it darkens up a lot and it's around the uh, uh, mouth and nose uh, area uh, it is very tender uh, so you, when, when you touch it it does hurt uh, it's going to be Nikolsky sign positive. Uh, Nikolsky sign is uh, pretty much it means that if you were to rub like some area right here, uh, the skin would come off just with a gentle rub. So, and you can get large uh, sheets coming off. 
Um, they do have fever. Um, Uh, they do tend to have fever, uh, but they they don't necessarily look toxic, and, except you know for this huge you know skin coming off. Uh, if they if they begin to look toxic, uh, so they don't they don't normally look toxic unless they develop a secondary sepsis or pneumonia. Uh, that is going to be you know more serious uh, type of situation, but it generally heals uh, within five to seven days. Uh, you know, and uh, especially in this, that's even faster if you give them antibiotics. So, um, not, and you know, it looks very severe, you know, they generally do uh, get through it over uh, after uh, some time. Now, you can also, uh, so if you try to actually take out and culture something here, you probably will not get the actual bacteria. That's because it's not a direct bacterial infection, it's a toxin that's being released. And so generally there's a foci. There's a, there's a foci of where the actual bacteria is, is residing. And that could be in the eye causing purulent conjunctivitis. Uh, it could be in the ear causing otitis media. Or it could even be a nasopharyngeal infection. So they might have these before. And this might be the area where they're releasing the toxin. So this is also something uh, that you might see. Now there's also as an intermediate form. Uh, the intermediate form is basically to, it's more like just a uh, bolus of pitigo that's a little bit more diffuse. Um, so it's not, you know, I don't know, it's uh, not that common. Usually you get one or the other. Uh, there are some important differential diagnoses that you do need to keep in uh, mind. As you can tell, uh, it does look very similar to Steven Johnson syndrome and ER, you know, toxic epidermal necrosis. So this is very, very important. Uh, how can you tell? Uh, it's a, uh, the difference, uh, primarily different ages. Um, it's called, you know, this condition occurs much more common in young ages, whereas, uh, you know, the Stephen Johnson syndrome and toxic epidermal crisis can cause the young too, but it, you, it's more common in a bit older uh, group. Um, also, if you do the zinc smear, this is very very helpful. Uh, zinc smear, you, you you will see acanthalytic lesions uh, in these, uh, you know, staphylococcal it's called the skin syndrome but you won't see that in uh, TEN. So this is more a feature of SSSS. Also, there will be, uh, with here there is a history of drugs, of some drug ingestion, because this is a drug reaction, more or less, uh, eight, about eight weeks ago. So that's kind of uh, the differentiating features between the two, and you, and you do really need to differentiate those two. Uh, how, what is the treatment? Uh, you know, first of all, you're gonna wanna give um, uh, you know, emollients, and you, you want to just keep the skin, uh, you know, kind of, I guess, supportive treatment, uh, emollients and all that stuff. Uh, then here's the thing, you, they, they, they have lost a lot of skin, and so you do, and when you lose skin, you lose fluid and electrolytes, so you need to replace fluid and electrolytes as needed, and generally you're giving this IV. Um, you also want to eradicate the Staph aureus, of course, by giving them antibiotics. Um, and of, and of course you want to give dressings. You want to sorry for uh, you want to protect that skin from getting uh, any other infections. Mortality uh, in the peds population is right around two percent. Uh, in the adult population, it's going to be right around ten percent. And this is generally because when adults do get it, it's probably because of some type of renal failure. You know, can't process the toxins or whatever, and so it's some underlying core morbidity that is causing the condition to begin with. Whereas in children, it's uh, much more uh, normal to get it, and, and they will. Pass over. So I uh, hope you guys learned a lot from that lecture. Uh, keep coming back. See you later.